All right, today I've got a generally inexpensive outdoor security camera for you guys. It is wireless, it is weather resistant, and it's $100 when it's not on sale, and it's about $75 when it is on sale. Uh, part of the reason I even got this thing is because it's always on sale. So let's check it out, see if it's any good. Right, guys welcome back to gadget conquest this is the blink camera this is the outdoor variant there's also an indoor variant i actually wanted to get the indoor variant um but it was completely sold out at best buy it was even sold out online now the outdoor variant here that i have is a hundred dollars for the single camera it also has a sync module uh it's a hundred bucks but this is on sale. I think this has been on sale every single time that I've gone to Best Buy. And it goes on sale for about uh, $25 off usually. So it's about $75 when it goes on sale, which is a really good deal when you consider the fact that it is an outdoor camera. It is completely wireless. Um, and it does have both a cloud subscription service and local syncing, which is pretty cool. So let's open this thing up. Now, the reason I bought this in the first place was I wanted to have a indoor camera to uh, just keep an eye on my cat while she is home alone to see if she destroys anything. And also uh, I needed a camera that was completely wireless because I have found that my little demon likes to chew on wires and that's obviously an issue. Now this camera in particular, um, both the indoor and the outdoor variant of this camera, ooh, look at that, that's pretty nice. Both the indoor and the outdoor variant of this camera, wow, that is quite the unboxing, look at that. That's, all right, you know, that's a 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, Blink, 10 out of 10. Uh, both the indoor and the outdoor variants of this camera come with this uh, sync module. Let's see if I can get it out of the box. There we go. Come with this sync module, which uh, you, okay, which you can plug a flash drive into and it will actually record to the flash drive. Uh, you power it through here. It is a micro USB slot, which kind of disappointing that it's micro B and not type C, but seeing as how it's one of those, you plug it in once and then you sort of just forget about it type deals. It's not really that, annoying. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. There is a, ooh, this, this is quite a, there we go, quite stuck in there. We got a little wall wart and it is Amazon branded. A little Amazon, Amazon branding there. You probably can't see that and I'm not going to go in. This is, Blink is an Amazon brand. If you go through here, you say an Amazon company. So it is separate from Ring, but it is still a Amazon brand. Let's see what else we have here. Just a weird little paper there. We've got a, this looks like a quite a long power cable. So this is just the USB cable to go from the wall wart to the sync module. Let's see what length we have on this. Okay. So this is probably like, oops, oops. I gotta stop doing that. This is probably like a meter cable or something like that, which isn't bad considering it has to go from the wall wart to the sync module and the sync module could realistically just be anywhere. There's no reason for it to be anywhere in particular, uh, as long as it's close enough to sync with the camera itself, which we have right here. There we go. That was quite, these things are really stuck in there. Anyway, the camera here is actually pretty decently sized. Um, the illustration on the box really doesn't do the size of the camera justice. It kind of makes it look a lot smaller than it really is. Um, it's a pretty decently sized camera. We'll take off all of this uh, plastic here. And it does come with some uh, mounting equipment. You have this piece here. And then you also have 
this piece here, which I assume these somehow go together, or maybe this goes on the back of the camera here. There's a screw cover on the back of it here you could pull off. And then you have, maybe this goes like this. I'm just trying to do this without reading the manual because I'm a bit of a monster. Use the included tool to unscrew the back cover, which I assume this is the included tool. So you could do this and then you unscrew it like that. This is interesting. I've actually been pretty curious about this for the Blink cameras for a while because unlike other completely wireless camera solutions, uh, Ring has some wireless solutions and Arlo, I believe is a company that has some wireless solutions as well. Unlike those other solutions, this one actually just runs on a couple of AA batteries, which luckily enough, it does come with the AA batteries in the box. And what's really interesting is it actually advertises a two year battery life on these AA batteries, which I'm very interested to see if it even lasts half that long. If it's really two years, then I don't mind it being AA. And actually, I prefer it to be AA batteries, something that is removable, something that is replaceable over built-in batteries that need to be recharged. The reason for that is this is for security. I mean, in my case, it's to keep watch over a cat that might destroy my apartment. But if you have something like this for security, you want as little downtime as possible Oh, excuse me. And having a rechargeable built-in battery that you have to wait a few hours to charge doesn't make any sense in that instance. That's time where you have a, a hole in your security. So having something like this where you could quickly take it down, replace the batteries, and then put it back up again and has, have as little downtime as possible is really ideal, especially if the battery life is even close to what they advertise it to be. So let's put this back on just like that. And it does actually say on here to use 1.5 volt lithium batteries only. So that's interesting. I wonder what would happen if you used um, sort of some standard nickel metal hydride batteries instead of lithium batteries. Uh, I don't know, as long as it's 1.5 volt, I don't see why the uh, type of the battery would matter, but I guess we'll find out. All right, cool. Don't need this anymore. Let's get this nice peel. It looks like it's a, like a matte black on the back while it is a glossy black on the rest of the device. Looks like you can peel this off here and you can peel off the edges. There does not seem to be a good way to peel off the edges. So we'll just grab a random edge and try to get it off. Not like that, don't, not like that. Anyway, let's use the knife. This, this is a, this, this was an oversight. You guys uh, forgot to make it so that this can easily come off. There we go. Ugh, nice, all right, got a cut in it. And there we go. So it looks like the edges are also a more matte black or rather somewhere between matte and glossy. It's not glossy like the front, but it's not matte like the back. It's somewhere in the middle there. Let's see what we got here. So we've got the camera in the middle. It has a speaker at the bottom, so this does have two-way audio, and it has, I'm assuming up top where this red light is flashing is also a, maybe an infrared light, because it does, advertise at least on the box here it says day and night hd view uh, so i'm assuming there's something in here somewhere that would help it see in the dark and i don't see any infrared lights anywhere else so i'm assuming that if there are infrared lights they're going to be there we've got a couple screws here and i think that's it this doesn't really that doesn't really come off so we can just close that up Nice. This obviously is going to work with Alexa. Stop listening, Alexa. That was my bad. Okay. 
Thank you for telling me that. Anyway, this does work with she who will not be named. Uh, obviously, if it's an Amazon product, that makes sense. Let's try to, this has plastic on it as well. Let's see if we can find the seam. Okay, this is a, oh, is that the seam? Nope, that's not the seam. I'm just ripping into this now. This is kind of an annoying, an annoying oversight. There we go. There we go. All right, we got it. Don't forget to put a seam on your plastics. Cover it up. All right, let's try and plugging some of this stuff in. So I'm gonna plug in the sink module behind me. I still have got that outlet back there. And we'll see about connecting this all up. There we go, and grab the sink module. There is a, there looks like a, right here on the sink module, just above the USB port, there's a button. I'm assuming it's probably some kind of sink or reset button, but we'll find out what it is later. All right, sink module is connected, and we'll just leave it on the floor over there. And let's see if, ooh, a quick start guide. All right, let's see if this quick start guide is any good. All right, right off the bat, this quick start guide, two of these pages, three of these pages are useless and one is a blank page. Nice. This is the only page on the quick start guide that actually is anything. It tells you to download the Blink Home Monitor app, add your module and add your cameras. And that's all it says. So. Let's try to get this done. I will download the app and I will add the cameras and then we will be right back. So give me just one second. All right, we're back. Now, I've gone through the setup process for the camera and for the sync module. So let's actually talk about that for a second. The setup process for the camera, uh, setting up the app and creating an account on Blink or for the Blink app uh, was not difficult, but kind of interesting in that it required two-factor authentication twice. So when I was originally creating the account, they uh, asked for an email address and a password, and then they sent me a verification email uh, that had a code to uh, verify with. So right there, you've already have your email verified. And then after I signed in for the first time, it immediately asked me for my phone number to do verification, uh, to send me a verification code through text or a call, which is kind of uh, iffy for me. Like I enjoy two-factor authentication. I use it as often as I can. It's very important for people to use two-factor two authentic authentication, especially if you don't have secure passwords. Now. I don't believe that two-factor authentication should be required in all cases. I personally use a password manager and I generate secure passwords uh, for secure, unique, whoops, somebody's car alarm just went off. I generate secure, unique passwords for all of my different websites and apps that I use. So I don't really need two-factor authentication for everything. And while I do prefer to use two-factor authentication on websites, I actually really hate doing it on apps. Uh, it's an extra step that I really hate doing, mostly just because of the fact that uh, it's not integrated. You know what I mean? Like it's it's slow. I have to leave the app. I have to go to my other app. I have to do this and do that. It's very rarely good. Um, and if they could do a better job of implementing it, I would be okay with it, but they haven't done so. Anyway, they do force two-factor fa two authentication on you, which is fine, I guess. And then once you're in, the camera and the sync module actually on the back have QR codes. And what you do is you set up the sync module first and the sync module, you scan the QR code on the back. It will set up the sync module. It will, before even fully connecting it, it will do a firmware update. And then once the sync module is set up, you can uh, set it up as a system in which you would sync multiple cameras with that sync module. Um, each system can have one sync module and then a bunch of cameras. And then once the system with the sync module is set up, 
excuse me, okay. You can go ahead and add the camera to it. You scan the QR code on the camera, it updates the camera firmware, and then while it's doing that, it actually gives you a little guide telling you a good place to mount the camera, uh, things to avoid when mounting the camera. Uh, they say situations in which um, people would be moving towards and away from you, and uh, when it's, uh, you know, avoid facing the sun, avoid facing trees that move too much. This is all for motion detection. The cameras do have a motion detection feature so that it will only record when there is, when it detects motion, which is a very useful feature. A lot of security cameras do that. And it's just giving you a guide to, of what to avoid when setting up a camera to use that motion detection feature in which most people probably would use in the first place. Um, a uh, thing that I noticed while I was setting up the camera was the I had to remove the back cover in order to get to the QR code on the camera. And I noticed a couple things. First of all, this is the outdoor version, so it is weather resistant. And the back cover actually does a good job of being weather resistant. So on the top here, there's this filter, which there's holes on the back. And this is one of those filters that it allows air to go in and out, but it actually does not allow water to go in and out. And then the USB port, which is also on the back, is properly uh, gasketed. Has a, uh, it has a gasket. And when you open it, it does uh, come with the gasket. You just have to make sure that when you close it again, if you ever do use the USB port, that you carefully close it and make sure that the gasket is closed on all edges because just pushing it down does not guarantee that the gasket will be closed on all edges. Uh, frankly, I don't really see a reason to use the USB port. It's just nice to have it there. Aside from that, I did also notice that if this mounting system is kind of iffy, it's both, it's kind of good and bad. So it's a screw based mounting system. You get this little mount and you have a couple of screws. So you just screw them into the wall or whatever surface you're going to be mounting to. And the way that this mounts is actually a uh, sort of a friction based system, I guess, where you push this piece into this piece. And I found that it's actually kind of kind of a pain to get it to go in all the way correctly. I think I, no, I did not get it. it. Oops, see what I mean? It's kind of annoying, especially since because of the way that this is set up, you don't actually put this on the camera first. You have to screw this into the wall first and then attach the camera to it, which maybe will be a little bit easier because you can sort of straighten it out and then force the camera onto it. But from my experience so far, it's kind of a pain in the butt and it's something that you'll want to do um, as rarely as possible. I have the camera up and running here. Let me get it back up and running again. There we go. I have the camera up and running here. It's running pretty well. It has quite a bit of uh, latency when I run the live view. So if I put my hand and I count, it's about three seconds between actually me putting my hand in front of the camera and it's showing up in the live view. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it is something to be aware of. It does also have the two-way audio, like I mentioned, along with motion detection. So overall, it's a pretty cool little system. It's very inexpensive. It's also very small. I would say this is pretty cool. I'm gonna set it up here inside of my apartment and I'm going to just let it run and see how it works, yeah. And I think what I'll do is after some time, I'll go into, I don't really know if this has a battery life indicator. Let's see, go through some of the settings here. So you can actually see the storage that it's using in the app along with changing the, uh, some of the settings in the app, including doing biometric unlocks so that people that have your phone can't just open up your camera and see what's going on. There ha it has a system wide light and dark mode for the app, which is pretty cool. And apparently there's a, oh, okay. So there's the neighbors thing, which is part of uh, the ring ecosystem, which is pretty cool as well. Anyway, uh, I think that's everything. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I give this thing so far, I'm going to give this thing two thumbs up. It's inexpensive. 
it is easy to set up and it doesn't require a cloud subscription in order to uh, actually use the service. You just need to have the sync module with a flash drive installed and you can uh, actually record your own stuff locally, which is really, really cool. And yeah, two thumbs up for this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you guys have a good week and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.